So, welcome everybody. It's week one, yay, of 2019. We get to start fresh and new. Are you guys excited? Yay. Yes, very excited about class. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We get to go over the awesomeness of entrepreneurship. And for those who do not know, I am Chef Rachel. I, um, and along with Chef Jonathan here, will be showing you the awesomeness of entrepreneurship. Uh, I grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, born and raised and then I lived all over the place and uh, ended up spending almost now 15 years in Colorado. Uh, I've been everything from you know pastry chef, baker, line cook, uh, catering chef, event planner, um, all the way to general manager and executive chef of a bed and breakfast. We had a catering um, we had the caterings, all that good stuff, because we had a special event center too. So all sorts of fun stuff with weddings, all that great stuff. And then we have Chef Jonathan, who also used to live in Colorado with me, but no longer. But he is, was with us for a bit. So Chef Jonathan. Well, hi. You guys might have heard this, I think, twice now, 165 and 155. But I'm Chef John. I... Uh, have been doing a little bit of everything in our industry. I've done catering, I've done hotels, uh, fine dining, beer bars, corporate dining, school dining halls. I've been all over the place. Um, most recently before I started this position, I was in corporate dining, really focusing on food costs and uh, profit and loss sheets and those types of fun issues that we're gonna be talking about all throughout this class. Don't tell Chef Tyson this, but this is actually like my favorite class because we get to talk about an insane amount of stuff in this class. Um, really all the <clears throat> different subjects you need to know to get your business up and running. We're gonna to touch real briefly on a lot of different stuff in this class. So I'm really excited to go through it with you guys. That's yeah. pretty much all I got. And I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. But as Chef Rachel said, I did used to live in Fort Collins, Colorado. Yeah, where I am. <laughs> and funny enough, we like, we had that like once we actually never met in Fort Collins, but once we, I started working here, I'm like, God, you look familiar. So I think we just ran just on the outskirts of each other's circles <laughs> for stuff. It's funny how that works, right? You end up uh, coming to an awesome Escoffier to meet people that was right down the street from you. So that's the beauty and awesomeness of technology. And technology is especially key because you're going to be using it a lot for your business to get you up and going. Now, how many people, what do you guys think an entrepreneur is? Someone that is dedicated and focused on their goals, that they are able to see it through the good and the bad. Yeah, dedicated, focused on their goals. What else? I think an entrepreneur is an innovator. Somebody with an innovation and a desire to succeed where others fail. Yep. What else? A lot of motivation. Motivation. A self-starter. Self-starter. Yeah, being your own boss. Being your own boss. What a person, else? A person to control their own destiny. What did you say, Nathaniel? A person to control their own destiny. Control their own destiny, right? What else? The one who thinks outside the box. The one who thinks outside the box. Yeah. And, and remember, and then I see... Chef Jonathan put down there, motivator, dedicated, leader, right? And you are the person that is willing to take the risk. You are willing to take that risk of opening up your own place. You have that dream. You have that goal. And it's you are taking that risk 
to follow through, to see it reach its goal, right? The reach the end goal being profitable in the marketplace. Uh, what did you say, Ebony? Was that, did you have a question? No, ma'am, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. So what are some things you think an entrepreneur has to do? Finances, know that and training everyone else, get his crew lined up on who he wants and who will help him succeed. Yeah. I like how very nice, Patricia. I like how Veronica said everything. That's great. <laughs> um, but what is part of everything? You got finances. What else do you guys have to think about? Get the team together. Get the team together. Yeah. Get Marketing. Your staff together. Marketing. What else? Networking. <laughs> Networking. The concept, right? Full cost, labor cost. Labor costs. Food costs. Food uh, costs. Creating the menu. Creating the menu. Time management. Time management. And remember, yeah. you have to be, that entrepreneur has to be the person who does the research, right? You need to know your stuff. You need to be the one to find the investor. You're finding who you're going to get the money um, from. You're finding out where, what location is going to be best for you. Uh, if your concept is going to work in your, um, in your area. What your market's looking like. All of those things. You are the problem solver. And that is a big part of entrepreneurship is problem solving and doing the research. Another big, big part of entrepreneurship is communication. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to communicate verbally and written so that if you go to an investor, you give them your business plan, your ideas, they can fully see what you want them to see what your dream is, what the vision is that you have for this business. And it's all about being able to do the research and communicate it. So that's why it's so important to be able to not only just say what, you're, what you want your concept to be verbally, but you need to also have it written down and be able to write it in a way that will make people want to be a part of your dream, be a part of what you want to create. Am I right, Chef Jonathan? Yes, absolutely. Please, excellent communication is really important. Uh, you guys have passion, you guys have drive. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. And so communicating that passion to other people and getting them to buy into your dreams that is a huge part of entrepreneurship or management or any kind of leadership in our industry. So definitely a great thing to be working on. Um, also, I'm seeing a little bit in the chat about communication. That's why you're here. We can help you with that. Exactly. Cause this is what we're here to do. This is what we are really good at doing. Chef Jonathan and I, we communicate like no other. We have shared Google Docs, just like how you guys have your Google Docs. But think of it this way, you're doing it already online, so you're already a, like a step ahead of other people who have never shared a Google document before. You guys do it all the time, right? You know how to do that. You know how to reach out to us. Um, and you also already started problem solving, right? Because you guys have your classes in your, um, your kitchen, like your cooking classes, and you may not have the same pan that you see in the recipe calls for. You have to problem solve. You have to figure out what you're going to do. And that is part of entrepreneurship is problem solving, figuring it out, being able to communicate. And... If I share with you my handy dandy screen, all of this you use when you're 
doing entrepreneurship. You are all about doing the research and the problem solving. And it is a cycle that is continuous. Now, some people may think, well, I don't have to worry about government policy, but you do because you're going to need to know about that for your labor laws, right? How much you're going to pay people for minimum wage. What is minimum wage? Um, for your infrastructure, your, all of those policies, procedures that you are going to put into place. The funding, how are you going to get the money to be able to do that? The type of establishment you want to have. What is the culture that you're looking for? Is this going to be a mom and pop, like fast food, uh, food truck styling? Or are you going to go high end Michelin star rated restaurant? Because it's going to have different culture. It's going to have a different environment. Those are all things you need to consider when you are looking at starting your business. So, and then you have, like I said, mentors, advisors, your support system. Look at it this way. This is your start. So Chef Jonathan and I, we are your support system because you are going to be going through all of these fun discussions that we'll have, the assignments, and this is that first draft for your concept, for your dream, what you want to happen, right? So you already have mentors right there, right? Isn't that great? And everybody has a mentor. Every entrepreneur I know has had a mentor. I can tell you um, from, you know, Otterbox to Apple to Bill Gates, everybody has had a mentor. So it's good to have those type of people to lean on. And that is how I want you guys to approach all of these assignments is that we are mentoring you. We are giving you the advice because Chef Jonathan and I have already have done this. We love doing this. I have a, a four-year-old soon to be an opinionated five-year-old right now, which is why I ended up switching and started teaching because, you know, five-year-olds kind of took precedence over running a business for me. <laughs> that kind of happens. But I wanted to still be a part of this industry that I love so much. And I wanted to pass on all the knowledge that I learned to you guys. And Chef Johnson is the same way. He has a lot of business. And it was kind of funny. Once I found out which restaurant uh, he was a part of, I was like, oh, snap. I know that one. Like, that's awesome that he did that. <laughs> Because he, like, he has a wealth of knowledge also. So remember, use, look at these assignments as communicating your concepts. You're going to look, you know, at all of the stuff that, like, we can give you as advice. And you're going to just grow from it, right? Everything starts off and then you just keep on improving. Am I right, Chef Jonathan? You are, and the other thing I wanted to say about these assignments is approach them from the perspective that I'm a potential investor. Yes, I was gonna say that, but I totally forgot, so thank you. <laughs> every little piece of this is gonna be a piece, every assignment in this class is gonna be a piece of your business plan. So you want it to look professional. You want it to look presentable because anybody you talk to who's gonna be involved in your business, whether it's a partner or an investor or a bank or anyone who you want to get involved, they're going to want to see all of these different pieces of what you're planning to do. So when I'm giving you a crit your critique back, that's me as an advisor. But when you're submitting it, make sure you're approaching it like I'm going to be one of your investors. <clears throat> yeah, That'll really right. help you to get these assignments where they need to be because this course is really, it, it's very easy to underestimate how much we're looking for. It's all about the why, not just the how. Yeah, because it's all about the detail. You want as much detail as possible because your investors are going to come at you asking for all the details. So they're going to want to know every single thing. So that's why it's so important to do your homework, do the research, know all the details so you can answer them just like that because they may not want to wait for a, um, oh, I'll just 
like, oh, let me look that up for you. They are going to want you to already know what the answer is. Um, because you, this is your business. You need to be the expert of your business. Am I right? Yeah. Now, how many people want to open up their own business? All right. And I thought, actually, Wayne, I, I think I remember you already have a, do, do you already have a business at this point? I, I'm trying to remember. I remember. Yeah, I, I do. I own a couple of businesses now. They're not yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, not, not in this one. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. So, because um, I remember your guys' faces from when I, um, I think from 165. So that's why. Um, so like I said, you know, make sure that you're communicating and that's where you have, you know, all of the education that you're going to be using, your human capital, your workforce, that's your labor, all of that fun stuff. And then you got your local and global markets. Your local and global markets is going to be dependent on your concept. How many people have been working on their concept since they have started? Right? Everybody does. Everybody know what their concept is, right? You guys know where your location's going to be for your place or around the area, right? I know you guys do because you had to do it in week two last block. Remember, we yeah. picked out our great locations. Yes. Yes, it's great. Oh, so glad you hear to hear that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, sorry. Question, go ahead. Yes. Uh, are we gonna? Are they gonna have access to these PowerPoint slides? Yes, you will. It will be underneath the. Uh, it'll be in the live session archive. So yes, it will be there for you guys. All right. So. You guys have already talked about that stuff. You know your location, you know, or the area that you wanna be in, you know your concept. Um, this is also where you guys may figure out what the demographic is for your place, right? Your demographic, that broad, broad view of what that population is in your location, because you wanna know that broad, population so you can narrow down what your target market is going to be so that you can market appropriately all of that fun stuff and you want to make certain that you have a good business plan right um, I love this little thing right here because this is why I say communication is so key because the how the customer explained it and what the person actually needed and all the different ways it could have been misconstrued. That's why it's so important to give the details and the descriptions so you won't end up like this. And when I'm talking about descriptions and within business plans, what do you guys think I'm talking about? You like it, Yana? Yana? <laughs> I see you laughing. <laughs> I think you're talking about like be descriptive, like your executive summary. So they yeah, exactly. confuse you with another business because you really want to focus on how you stand out from other businesses. Yeah, how you focus, how you're going to stand out from other businesses. What else do you think that we should, what else do you think you should be descriptive about for your business? I think when we start building a business, uh, case analysis, we need to start considering uh, the the uh, the potential stakeholders, the, the, where we're getting the finances, and figure out okay, what's in it for me from their perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stakeholders, because stakeholders, stakeholders, and we'll talk about this throughout the class too, is different than your shareholders, right? Because your stakeholders, that's everybody that is included that will have something to do with your business. So that's that community that you're going to be in with your location. Those are your customers. It's your staff. It's the investors. It's all of those people who are going to have an impact on your business and how you do business. Um, what 
else do you think we have to worry about for descriptions and details in your business plan? What other parts are there to a business plan? Uh, competition. Competition, right. You want to know what your competition's doing. That's so important. Uh, you want to see what everybody's doing, what the best practices are. Um, is there something that they're doing better than you? Is there something that you can look at? Those are all things to consider. What else? In the chat, we've got concept, SWOT, layout, and kitchen flow. Okay. Yes, concept, SWOT. I love you guys said SWOT. I'm a big yep. SWOT fan. Uh, we will talk about SWOT, definitely. And then uh, we'll also talk about, you know, like uh, somebody said, Veronica said mission statement. So what is a mission statement? It's like a quick elevator pitch or a quick, quick um, description of your business or, yeah. Yeah, it's the quick <laughs> the elevator pitch of your business. Uh, what else do you guys think your mission statement is? The reason why your company exists. The reason why your company exists, right? You, um, an effective mission statement must be clear, right? It has to be concise. Uh, you want, because it's a declaration about your business, your strategy, what you are defining what your business is and the reason for its existence. So um, there's business statement or mission statements. And then you have also the delightful catchphrases and mantras, right? You guys heard of the mantras and catchphrases before? What do you guys think of catchphrases? Da, 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 da. I'm loving it. <gasps> nice. It's exactly every single time. That's exactly what I think of. That is a catchphrase. That is not a mission statement, right? So when you're looking, you need to make certain you're actually doing a proper mission statement. Um, because it's going to help cre create your in entirety of your business. It's going to tell you what type of environment, what type of culture you're going to have, what your core values are. Because if your mission statement is about making a sustainable effort and using, you know, farm to table, obviously your core values are going to be using organic, right? Non-GMO, making it sustainable, all that kind of stuff. So it helps build what your business is actually going to be, what it's going to look like. And there are some places that have um, some fantastic mission statements and some that, you know, are so-so. Let me pull up on my delightful screen for you guys. So you guys get an example of what mission statements look like. Doop. So. You have all of these ones, spread the power, sweet green, to inspire healthier communities by connecting people to real food. Pantagonia, build the best product, because uh, no unnecessary harm, use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. And then American Express, we work hard every day to make American Express world's most respective service brand. You guys actually know how American Express started? You guys know by chance? Anybody? Anybody? They actually were a competition. They were like the original like FedEx. Um, they were the competition for the post office. And then they ended up going into, uh, the founders were Wells Fargo and another guy, you know, Wells Fargo, and then one other guy, and they started doing the bank stuff. And then they started switching to travelers checks, which made them go into the hospitality industry this delightful service industry that you guys are in, right? Isn't that fun little spin? So, and honest tea, to create, promote, great tasting, healthy, organic beverages. It is telling you what they are doing, right? Um, Nordstrom, to give uh, customers the most compelling shopping experience possible. These are nice 
mission statements. They're full sentences. They're not the mantra three word responses, right? They're actual, decent, nice. They have a, they define what the business is and what they're trying to be. This is important because you're going to be doing this for your assignment. Am I right, Chef Jonathan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the other thing is when you're writing it, remember, this is really more directed at your business, your employees, your managers, your staff, than it is outward facing. You want people to know what you're about, but it's not really about marketing. It's really about providing direction to your business, if that makes sense. Yes, because there is the one that does the broad view and that's your vision, right? Like the vision statement that gives you that broad view of what your customer is and how it's going to be like uh, make your the customers and the community a better place, you know? So that is your vision, but your mission, as Chef Jonathan said, was perfect. That is giving direction to people. So if somebody's going to come to work for you, they know what you're all about, what you're expecting from them. Have you guys, how many people are working now? You guys working? Yes, yes, yes. Are you guys currently working? Do you guys work for a business? Do you know what the mission statement is for your, the business that you work at? Nope. Veronica said no. Does anybody know? And won't that be an interesting thing when you go back to work and uh, ask what the mission statement is? I'd be interested to see what uh, you guys say it ends up being, right? Right? Yeah? So, let me go on. Where is my delightful little statement. I'm like, where did my, my slideshow went astray. There it is. Okay. I was like, where did my slideshow go? Ta-da. So remember we talked about this is an ongoing process. You're, you guys have been talking about the concept, you've been talking about your business, and it's always an ongoing circular process, which is where I like to bring up the plan, do, check, act. Every time you guys do a recipe, it doesn't turn out. What do you do? Do you guys continue using that same recipe even though it doesn't work? Cook it, cook it again, just try it differently next time. You try it differently next time, right? So, impossible. yeah, you're going to make a plan. You realized that recipe didn't work. So you're going to figure out how are you going to fix it? What, are, what do you need to do to fix this to make it work? Then you're going to follow through. Make sure that it, uh, if it works or not. That's where you check to see, did it turn out? Did it not? And then you act. Was it good? Do we have to reevaluate? Do I need to add something else to it? It's a constant cycle that people already do and they don't even know that they do it, right? But the beauty is you can use this for everything. You can do it for perfecting that recipe. You can do it for when you redo your assignments, right? You get the grade, uh, you show your assignment as an investor and then Chef Jonathan, your consultants, comes in, tells you the things that need to be changed, and then you guys resubmit, right? You go through, you come up with the plan, you resubmit everything. And it's gonna be important for when you're doing your business, for your planning, for your policies and procedures, for training your staff, all of those things. And the most key part about doing this entire cycle, what do you think the key point is about the cycle? Most important part of it. Do. Do, oh, but, oh, I'm sorry, I should say this. What do you, like, you're doing the whole part of the cycle, but throughout the entire process, what do you think you have to do throughout the entire process? Check. You get a check or communicate. Communicate. Communicate what you're doing. 
Because if I changed the recipe and I was like, okay, sweet, it's perfect. But I don't tell Chef Jonathan that I changed the recipe. He's going to do the old recipe. He has no idea that things changed, that it didn't work. So you have to communicate throughout each part of it where you say, this didn't work. This is why it didn't work. We're going to try this. That is why, how many people, you guys know American Test Kitchen? You guys, American Test Kitchen? Yes, yes. Cooks Illustrated, all, their, all of them, right? I love their books because they go over all the different parts. They say like, I tried this recipe with AP flour. These are the results. I tried it with cake flour. These were the results. They discuss all of the different parts and why it happened. So that's why it's, I love doing that stuff because plan, do, check, act, because you guys are already doing it and now you can implement it into your business, into your concept, into your assignments, right? Because yes, yes. I see Chef Johnson is shaking his head yes. Everybody else is like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> right so remember it's all about communication and then we would go into was it veronica did you talk about the delightful swat analysis one delightful part of your business plan Oop. swat analysis yay i love swat analysis it is such a fabulous fabulous tool to use and you will use it you can use it for everything right you can use it for your marketing plan you can use it in your business plan it is a key key tool here because you have your strengths right things that you're doing good you know you're on top of you're awesome at it then you have oh, I don't know why those are swapped <laughs> um, it says opportunity. Sorry about that. I uh, accidentally did that wrong. But this is your weakness. Weakness should be under there. I'll fix it for before I post it. <laughs> I'll fix my slide. Um, what could you be doing differently to make it better? Uh, that recipe, right? Was it the best recipe that you made or could you change something? Could you add like, you know, cinnamon to your blueberry muffins to make it better? Can you add a little nutmeg to that banana bread? Those kind of things you have to think about. And then you have your opportunities. Um, um, Chef, yes. uh, Veronica asked, is SWAT all encompassing? I'm not quite sure what you're asking, Veronica. Can you be, can you kind of flesh that out a bit? Veronica? No, you, um, I see you put, is it every part of the business or just the menu? You're going to use this in your business plan. You're going to use this in like your marketing plan. You can use it for your menu development, right? Like you can look at the design of your menu. Is it selling? What are your best things that are selling? You don't have to, it, it can be broken down. It can be for your entire business and it can also be for different parts of it to see which parts need to, that you're focusing on. Um, so when you're looking at, you know, that's the beauty of the SWOT is that you can use it for different aspects. Right, Jeff? It looks like you're about to say something. I was just going to say for this week's assignment, you're going to do it for kind of your whole business as opposed to just focusing on your menu or marketing or something you can you pull from anywhere you want as long as it's having to do with your concept yes exactly um, and remember your strengths and weaknesses those are going to be the internal what you see is happening inside your business it's very much the internal the opportunities and threats those are going to be the external things that are happening outside of your business because threats are there. Um, weather, you don't have any control over weather, right? There can be a tsunami, earthquake, forest fire, mudslide. When mother nature is mad, she lets you know. Am I right? 
you that is a threat. You don't have any control over it, but you can prepare for it. Those are things to think about. Opportunities. Um, can you expand your business? Can you open up a new location? Um, is there a, can you open up an online like shopping platform where you sell uh, your goods online to people? Those are the type of things to consider. Um, and now if we, uh, let me go to my delightful little, I pulled up for you guys. If I find it, a delightful little website that goes over, uh, that's up in Estes, or no, I'm sorry, not Estes, Aspen. Everybody knows where Aspen is, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, chef. Oh, good. Aspen's in Colorado. It's a very fancy ski town. Um, John Denver, he lived there, you know, every single uh, Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. He was all about going back to Aspen, Colorado. Um, yep, Country Roads. I love that song. <laughs> and, um, and this place is in uh, Aspen. I picked it because it was one of the most expensive places I could find in Aspen. Going at a whopping $1,500 a night for this five-star resort. Look at how much fun this is. I will even put it in the chat for you guys so everyone can look at how awesome this place is. Five stars and five diamonds, 20,000 bottles of wine, the concierge, you have Aspen, you got amenities up the kazoo, your location, doesn't it look fun? There's awards, there's blogs, all of this awesomeness. Doesn't that place look like a fun place to go to? Would you guys want to go there? Yes? No? Maybe so? Yes? If we go to accommodations, check out these guest rooms. They have suites, premium suites. Look at how pretty that is. Ooh. How many people want to go there? Ooh, right? So, we're looking at this. I know, it's fun, right? And then, what do you guys think a strength is of this place? What would a strength be for that place? Veronica says location. Location. Quality of amenity. Amenities, what else? The service, yeah. You better believe they better have good service, am I right? Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Because you know that the housekeeping is in fact, oops, I spelled that wrong. The heart of the hotel is housekeeping, right? Okay, what do you think a weakness is gonna be for this place? Price. And price. Price slash cost, I see. What else? Weather. Weather. Location. Location. Availability. Right? Because you see a location is in two places? That can happen. Am I right? Because the location can be a strength and it can be a weakness. That happens. If it's what already, about, oh, sorry, go ahead. Real quick about that. If you're going to use something as both a strength and a weakness, give me like two words in addition to that that'll tell me why it's a strength and why it's a weakness. Yes. Just so that I, I can see why you've got it in both places. Mm-hmm. And then opportunity. What do you think an opportunity would be for this place? Employment, possible employment. Wait, say that again. Possible employment. Possible employment, how so? Um, 
maybe you want to work there. But this is for the business itself, not for the employees. So what would be an, uh, oh, Nicole wrote sponsorships, Veronica wrote weddings. So it's looking at opportunities from the, um, from the business aspect, not just the employee aspect, but I see catering. Entertainment. Place. Yep, entertainment. They are up in Aspen. They can totally do a, you know, uh, a delightful little, uh, whatchamacallit, like movie indie screening or something like that. Am I right? Have all the celebs up there. I see sponsorships. Weddings. Weddings, banquets. I was going to say yeah. ski packages if it's close to a ski lodge of getting more people in there drawing from the, for that. Exactly, right? You can even do partnerships, right? Where you have a partnership with a restaurant in town or maybe with a uh, like limousine company, like a car service company that will come and pick up people from Denver because Denver's airport, it's not really in Denver. It's like, what is it, Chef? It's like a half hour outside of the city. Like it's in the middle of nowhere. Like they say Denver, but I think like they literally moved the line just to put the airport out in like the middle of nowhere. <laughs> So you're going to want a partnership to get somebody to actually, like, get people up to the mountain, right? Okay, and what would a threat be? Location. <laughs> location. <laughs> so why would that be a threat then? If you're going to say lo the weather. Getting booked too quick. Getting booked too quick? Yeah. Why would that be? Uh, if you keep trying to g get there and it's always booked up, you don't know when to try and book there so then you can I'm trying to award it another way. Yeah, I see Patricia. where you're going. You I think Patricia to... means I'm sorry, Chef. I think she means it being overbooked. Yeah, it's overbooked. You're constantly trying to get in there and there's no rooms available. So then, um, so that's the threat to them of not getting my getting your business. business Limited there. space. So then, where would you go? To the next hotel that's cheaper, probably. So the I'll competition, go to my hands. right? So you go to the competition. That's yeah. going to be a threat, right? Right. Um, what about insurance? insurance yeah insurance because i mean you set the price for insurance but you don't really have control over it once you get it going right uh, you're, you're you're talking about a hotel near the airport in denver nope i'm talking about up in aspen i was saying that the hotel is nowhere near the um the actual okay. I just want to make sure I was part of it. So. Yeah, no, you're good. And then like location, weather, I see winter environment, right? And that can also bring up seasonability, right? How about not enough snow for tourists? Yeah, that's part of that. Oh. Do they make snow out there ever or do they just rely on Mother Nature? No, they make snow. Okay. Seasonability, seasonability, that's right, right? Sure, we'll go with that. So this is the beauty of the SWOT analysis, right? And you notice how we came up with three to four different things. Isn't that great? We came up with three or four different things just for that place that we were able to come up with. And I mean, looking at it, it's really cool. And it also brings up a great part which is you're going to need three or four things for that SWOT analysis for your assignment that is due on Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. The late period is on Thursday, so but you guys are going to all get it done on Tuesday, am I right? You're not going to wait and get that minus 15 points, that minus 15 percent. You're going to have it done on Sunday? Right. That's exactly I, I right. Have mine done by Friday or Saturday? 
Nice. That's uh, what we like to hear. Because Jeff Jonathan's going to talk about the assignment that you guys have due. I am. So, a couple things with that. Number one, Tuesday night deadline. Can't stress that enough. That's a deadline. You want to make sure to get it in early because the earlier you get it in to me, the more opportunity you have to resubmit because it gives me time to take a look at it, get you your feedback. That way, if you don't quite get that 100%, you can resubmit with those changes before the deadline while you still have time. So definitely submit early, submit often. I love seeing your assignments and I love seeing how far they come over the course of a week. It's fantastic. Um, so with that being said, can you guys see my screen now? Yes, no? Yes, all right. Um, so class page looks a little different this block, but it's laid out pretty much the same. Under week one, you've got your lessons. These are gonna be really helpful for you in your um, homework assignments, so make sure to check these out. You have your uh, assignment right here. So when you click into that, there is this link for the template right here. So make sure you click this, make a copy of the template. That'll bring this up. This is your homework assignment. You're gonna do all the work for this week right on here. So first thing, um, name of business, pretty easy, right? It's whatever your concept name is. If it's not the final product, if you haven't thought this through to where you are ecstatic about the name you have, that's okay. Just throw something in there that gives me an idea the direction you're going. Type of operation. This would be if you're gonna be a catering company, if you're gonna be a food truck, if you're gonna have a restaurant, a gastro pub, what is it that you're gonna be doing? That would be that type of operation. How many days a week are you open? What are the hours of operation? I think those are pretty straightforward for you guys. Like I said with that, like Chef Rachel was saying with that mission statement, uh, this should be a statement that really drives your business. It tells your employees how you want your business to function so that they can make decisions that are in line with your dream and your goals whenever they're in the building on the payroll. Uh, if it's not perfect, that's okay. This is a first draft. I can tell you right now, I've seen maybe a couple perfect ones come through in the four or five blocks that I've been in this class, and that's okay. It's a starting point, and it's something you're really going to turn over until the day you open in the back of your head and really keep messing with until it's right where you want it. So uh, ideal location, please be as specific as you can. But at the very least, I want to see a city and a state. I have no idea what you're talking about if you don't give me those two things. For your location demographics, this is not your target demographic for your business. This is who lives in that city and state. So I live in Omaha, Nebraska. So I'm going to go to this website right here, census.gov. And if you type in the search bar right up top here, Omaha, you see Omaha City, Nebraska. If you click there, you get all these fantastic results straight from the government. So you know it's a reliable source of, of this type of information. There's a lot of really great data in this in these quick boxes to the right. There's even better de detail in these census results. So this is all about research. We are looking for specific numbers. On that template, it says right here, we're looking for the average age, income, home prices, and education level of the people that live in this area. These should be specific numbers. They should not be your observations. Also, I don't want to see a link here because if I'm your investor, I like holding a piece of paper. And you know what I can't do when I print this out? I can't click on your link. So you want to give the actual information. So for instance, 
If I were doing this for myself, I would go on to census.gov and I would find this very specific information about the city and state that I'm in. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, style of service, counter service, so that would be like a Qdoba or a McDonald's where you go up to the counter, you order your food, you grab your food, and you go elsewhere to sit down. Table service is they're bringing the food to you. Y'all know what a buffet is, drive through food truck. Uh, you could do to go for a food truck. Um, as long as I know generally what you're talking about, that's okay, but really... If you're doing a food truck or a catering company or something, some of these may not be specifically applicable or they're just gonna be very much implied. Food truck would really be more counter service because you're going up to a counter, you're ordering, you're grabbing it, your food at the counter and you're taking it away. So you could say to go, but I think it would just be a little more accurate to say um, counter service. Uh, catering. Catering would, you would probably list both buffet and table service because you're going to have different event, events with different needs. And <clears throat> so that's definitely something you're going to want to keep in mind is if you're going to have a catering aspect to your business, you want to consider that as you're filling this out. Uh, marketable features. This is the stuff that makes your business special. There are some examples here, theme, menu style, products offered, service techniques, atmosphere. These are general ideas. They are not answers to this. You can't just say theme for marketable features. Go ahead, Patricia. What's why my concept was from, are we using the ones that we did in the other class to bring it into here? I would do that. If I were you, um, because you've already done a lot of work for, on that concept, you have a menu built out, you know what your concept is, you know your location, your floor plan, you've really put a lot of great thought and effort into those throughout the last three blocks. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. That being said, if you want to change your concept, do it today before you submit week one assignment because I do want you to stick with the same concept for the next six weeks. Yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure if we had to get something new or go from what we had of working on that. Yeah, so it would be easier to work with the concept you've been working with because you've already put so much thought and energy into it. However, I'm totally happy to see what your new concept is. So it's up to you. But once you do a concept for week one, I'd like to see you stick with it all the way through the next six weeks. Okay. Orion, you have your hand raised? Uh, yes, I do. Hey, so I have a quick question. Uh, when it comes to the uh, location and demographics, I actually, uh, because I've already been do doing deliveries and uh uh, caterings and like I did Walmart for Thanksgiving. So my question is, um, I had the post office, they've already, cause I delivered to them too. So their advertising department contacted me and they're, they already emailed me what my demographics are, the average household income and things like that. So can I utilize that? Yes. Perfect. Cite your source though. Oh, I, I can, I can tag you in the link and everything that they sent me. I have it in my email. Yeah, just really, if you let me know where the information is coming from, as long as it's not somebody's blog or like bob.com that has nothing to do with census stuff, but he's got randomly demographic info in there. Oh, no, it's, 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 the information. it's the United States Post, uh, right. Post Service. I, I delivered to them. Right. I'll that provide have, you that information. You can have a... Yeah, and Wiki, Wiki is not a reference because yeah. I can go on there and say that the Queen of England is a seven foot purple dinosaur with green polka dots on it and it will let me change it to that. So that is why you have to go off of reputable sources. Nicole Please Barney. Yeah. Understood. Thank reputable, you. Thank you so much. Reputable sources. So government is great. Post office is fantastic. Thank you.
I always thought the Queen of England was a purple dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cranking through here. Um, marketable features. This is what makes your business unique. So if there is something about your theme that makes your business unique, that can be a marketable feature, but you have to let me know what it is that's special about your theme. If there's something special about your menu, that's great. I just need to know what it is. You can't just say theme or menu. You have to say specifically what about your theme or your menu is um, unique to your business. So for instance, for my marketable features on this, um, on this one, I have specific dishes here that are unique to the area. I have what makes that atmosphere um, marketable. The lighting, the seating, the tables. You want to be really specific about what it is you're, you're telling me here. Uh, seating capacity. If you're a food truck, it's probably going to be zero. Unless you're going to bring some picnic tables along, that's great. If it's, yes, uh, Roberta, that gluten-free would be a marketable feature. Um, seating capacity is just very simply how many seats you're going to have during service. Estimated number of guests served daily and estimated check average per guest. These are estimates. They don't have to be exact. Look at your menu. Think about what you expect the average person to order and how much that would cost, and that would be your average check. Um, we talked about turns and covers last block in 155. So you can kind of reference back to that assignment as well if you're looking for those uh, estimated number of guests served in a day. Uh, seating capacity for delivery or catering service, probably zero. Make sure to put zero in though. If it's blank, I don't really know. Catering is, is weird because every event is gonna have a different number of guests. I've catered for 7,000 people. I've catered for three people. So, you know, it doesn't really work, but if you have an expected, if you are expecting the bulk of your business to be from, uh, say, an office nearby, and you know there are 50 people in that office that you're gonna serve three days a week, I'd say your seating is probably 50. Use your best guess. Again, it doesn't have to be really exact. So, all last block, I was asking you for a concept summary. Guess what? I'm going to be asking you for a concept summary all this block too. That one or two sentences about your business, I need to see it pretty much every single week of this class. And it is worth a lot of points on your assignment. So make sure to include that. Uh, this will help you to write that. And if you fill this in this week, then you can just copy and paste that into your week two, your week three, your week four assignments as you go through. But you're going to have all of this wonderful information here that will help you with future assignments. So make sure you write that two or three sentences about your business right here. For Poor John's Pub here, I kept it pretty straightforward. Poor John's Pub is a gastro pub in Omaha, Nebraska. So that has my business name, type of operation, and my location. Open seven days a week, 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. with both bar and table service at all times. So in one sentence, I was able to hit all of this criteria. You can do that, that's totally cool. I don't need three sentences. I just need to see this information in your concept summary. Finally, we're going to do exactly what you guys just did with Chef Rachel. Fill out this SWOT analysis. Each of these boxes has three bullet points in it. I will have to dock you points if you don't have three bullet points in each of these boxes. So it, Please do have at least three strengths, at least three weaknesses, at least three opportunities, and at least three threats for your business. And then you're going to put yourself in your competitor's shoes and do the same thing for them. Act like you're them. 
what are their strengths as a business? What are their weaknesses as a business? Um, so that is your week one, week one assignment. Questions, comments, concerns? And remember guys, if you don't think you have any weaknesses or threats, that's a weakness and a threat right there, is that you can identify that those are areas. I definitely have talked to people before where they're like, oh, I don't have any threats. And I'm like, well, yes, you do. Like, there's a whole slew of threats that could happen to your business. Like, a flood could happen right now. The government could decide that your zone for residential and make you close down your uh, building because they don't want you there anymore. Like they may want to widen the road and buy your business like building out. And so you don't have a building anymore. Like those type of things happen. So just remember there's always something and it's your job because it's your business to find what that something could potentially be. So you can plan ahead. You can be ready for it. You can be prepared. It won't come as a shock. Am I right? Go ahead, Yana. Um, could a, a threat also be like a vendor going out of business or not being available anymore? So the consistency may stay different. And it also couldn't a threat be like food safety? Like what if somebody wasn't trained well and they're serving like past outdated food <laughs> Poor, poorly trained staff might be a weakness more than a strength but contaminated food would definitely be a threat yeah that recall all those funds like recalls that's a threat so those are things to consider all right and now when is your assignment due you guys remember yeah, 11.59.59 by Tuesday. Yeah, 11.59 p.m. <laughs> Central Standard Time by Tuesday. Do you guys have any other questions for us? No? No? Well, I hope everybody has had a fabulous, fabulous week back getting back into the swing of things. Uh, don't forget, do your homework. I have to do my homework right now for my classes because I'm in my last 10 weeks of uh, my master's program. So I'm right there with you guys doing my homework. I have to do my homework right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Chef Jonathan. I forgot something. For your competition, yeah. let me know who that competition is. And also, everybody has competition. If you are going to be the only Italian restaurant in town, well, guess what? Every other restaurant in town is your competition even if they're not doing italian food so choose a specific place and everybody does have competitions just kind of forgot sorry about that no that's a good one yeah i forgot too so i'm glad you caught it but all right well i hope everybody has a fabulous fabulous rest of your week we're looking forward to seeing all of your guys' hard work on these delightful SWOT analysis and those beautifully written first drafts of your mission statement and everything, right? Because remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, a, your, it's your first draft, so don't worry. Just That's what we're here for. Just remember, communicate, write it like we're an investor, and then we're going to consult you on the best approach next, right? Jeff Jonathan's great at it. Am I right? Because you guys have had him before. Mm -hmm. You guys love Chef Jonathan? I do. Yeah. He's fabulous. Yeah, fabulous. So, all right, everybody. Well, we'll see everybody next week. Same time, same place. I hope everybody has fun. If you have any questions, please let us know. And we'll see everybody, yeah, next Thursday. All right, have a good night. Bye, everybody.